On this particular site, they have uh, two chillers, a Cairo chiller and a gradient chiller here. Uh, they're fairly new. Uh, we're going to do a PM on uh, both the chillers this morning. Um, first of all, I usually start by uh, just taking all the screws out of the units. You don't have to yell. Okay. Yeah, I, just, I start by taking all the unit, taking the units apart. Let's start taking these units apart. All right. It's usually all done by uh, Phillips screwdriver. Um, you have your top section here. You don't actually have to take this off because you take the whole top off, but this is where you can add uh, coolant uh, to the machine without taking the whole top off if you have to add coolant to it. Um, I'm going to start taking all these out. All this. Keep going. Yeah. All right, these machines run off of uh, 407C. Um, so I have a set of electronic gauges so I can take my sub cool and superheat pressures and everything uh, with these gauges. First, I'm going to take my uh, in and out temperatures of my water piping. You have to take them for five minutes every 30 minutes. Um, this is your uh, water piping here, your uh, in and out. So turn this to temperature and just kind of get these hooked up here. Good on there. Mm -hmm. I get one here. There. There we go. So okay, now it's on. Okay, now it's dropping. My temperature to drop. You can use the clamp-on thermometers. Um, to get your temperatures. Um, another way to get your temperature is to also use um, use a regular meter with the thermo thermometer probe. And my temperature this is actually going to be better for your temperature on these pipes the way this one's set up because the clamps are picking up air off this wall from the condenser fan uh, so it's going to pick up the heat and uh, this is clamped more on the piping uh, the best way to be able to be to have it insulated on there so you know the temperature is not being affected by any air We can just let that sit. We just watch our temperatures uh, every five minutes for 30 minutes while it runs and record them. While we're waiting on that, we can take apart the uh, front of the unit and uh, oh, sorry. oh, open them up. There we go. All right. I'll uh, use the key to get it open. And then you have two screws down here. Take the whole front off. up on it Chris there Get that out of the way. all right here's your compressor all right here's your compressor liquid line dryer your sight glass you want to make sure the sight glass is full um, you have your pump connection back here uh, your suction line high pressure switch um, and then you know your condenser coil there this is your uh, simulator 
you have a, or your receiver, and you have a, a fitting on there to take your uh, low side pressure when you take your sub cooling. Um, this is a, a drain. If you have to drain the tank outside for the glycol to uh, repair or replace a pump or repair something with the water section, you can shut the water off, drain your tank, and reuse the glycol that you take out of that tank. So, go ahead and get into the electrical panel. your serum, got your uh, compressor, your pump, contactors here, and you have your uh, thermometer here, your uh, thermostat, um, your serial number is located here. You want to record your serial number down with every maintenance. Oh, and then you can take your amp draws on your compressor and your fan. Uh, they are all numbered, so you can find out very easily which one is your uh, your compressor, which one's your fan, you can look at your wiring diagram if you need to, find out which one it goes to. So, all your information's on here. Put that to the side. We're running 7.3 amps, which is good. Anywhere from 6.5 to 8 would be good on the compressor. 6.5, 7.5 is normal. Uh, you take all three legs. 7.5, 7.4, that's good. And then get line number three. 7.4, 7.5, that's good. So the compressor has good amps on it. Now we can do our pump motor. 3.6, good amps on the pump. Get our next leg here. 3.5, that's good. Right there, 3.5, good. All right. So that is our amps for our pump and our compressor. Now that I still got this open, I'm going to take uh, uh, my pressures. Right now the compressor is shut off. I can go ahead and take my caps off and start getting my pressures. Uh, <coughs> suction valve back here. And you do want to watch out some of this uh, area has hot piping in it, you don't want to burn yourself. Back on the liquid line, they've used a king valve, so it may be easier to take off the back panel to get your pressure open for your liquid line uh, to reach in through the back over the pump and get in there. So, let's see what we got here. And uh, don't forget, along the way, we're recording our temperatures of our in and out pipe every five minutes for 30 minutes, so every five minutes, take your temperatures of your piping. Um, hey Chris, we need to take this uh, back panel off over here. Oh.
again we have a, uh, another screw down here that somebody had stripped out so uh, I'm gonna have to figure out how to get it out way to do it is to tape take some tape you got a probe like this you have a probe yeah I got this you need a probe that's not gonna work to take your temperatures I got, you got some tape okay this uh this cover is actually got a screw in it that somebody stripped out when they put it back in so I can't get it off without drilling that screw out so instead of wasting a lot of time, there is another liquid line valve back here I can get my pressure for. I'm gonna change where my hose is. Uh, I usually take it off the receiver, but in this case, I'm gonna take it back here. All right. So my pressures, I got 82 and 141. We have five pressures on this. Now I'll hook up my uh, probes and get a superheat and sub cool. So, switch. My liquid uh, pipe here. Take a temperature of that liquid pipe. And then I'll move over here to get my suction line temperature down on my suction line. here open okay so that's gonna give me my super heat and sub cool here Right now, this is saying I have a zero degree sub cool. Oh, uh, the machine's not running, is why. Machine shut off. There we go. I have a 15 degree superheat. Here. 15 to 20, pretty good superheat for this machine. Okay. And that's why you usually take it off your receiver. That pressure there is changing from the valves. You want a constant pressure from that receiver, but uh, the door is stripped out. So, um. Also, where'd my thermometer go? Where'd my stick thermometer go? It was sit I thought I had it sitting up here. Yeah. Uh, See a stick thermometer laying around? Oh, there it is. Oh. So, uh, you also want to take the temperature of your. Uh, for your condenser I'm going to take my inlet temperature for the condenser in this area so 
95 degrees is good for my inlet temperature and then I'm going to take my outlet temperature over here on the condenser. Condenser temperature, air coming off the condenser temperature. A 90, 95 and 112 in my temperatures there. Um, there's also inside the unit is uh, sight glass and there's a clear plate. This plate is um, see through, you can see the level of your glycol in the machine here. Uh, it's, it's always yellow. Uh, you can see that this one is always full, um, or it's full. It's full right now, but you, you'll be able to see there. If it's low, you'll be able to see a, the yellow is low on this, and you would want to add the, the correct coolant to the machine. The yellow dye, 50-50 glycol with deionized water into the machine. You can see right here it tells you the 407C refrigerant for the machine also. These are your water pipes that uh, the glycol is going through into the building to cool the magnet of the MRI machine. And also you can see your pump here on on this. You got your, your pump here. There is a gauge inside here that's up in here that tells you the pressure, your water pressure of that pump. Uh, that's also needed to record for this uh, PM. Okay, so we got almost all our, our checks that would, are needed. Um, you know, you really want to check through the wiring and make sure the wiring in here, there's no burn marks. All the wires are tight. Uh, the connections are good. On here, your relays look good. Transformer. No burn marks or heat marks on the sticker or anything. So make sure, you know, visual look out, make sure everything it looks like it's in good condition. You can check your wiring in the condenser also to make sure there's no wires uh, that are being, you know, touching the hot pipe and being burned or fraying or dry rotting. So everything looks okay on this machine. So now we can get to cleaning the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and take my gauges off. Uh, I've recorded my pressures, my superheat. So go ahead and take that gauge off over there, Chris. thermometer in the condenser coil right here they have a sensor on the condenser right here
compressor with it off a little bit in the area. Just spray it real lightly and get it out. You got the back open so you can spray all the dirt, keep it clean around the compressor and the pump. You don't want to flood it with water, but you know, give it, you know, the cleaner we keep it in there, the cleaner it's going to be for us to work on. No, we'll let it drain out. Uh, this right here is the top. Uh, this is where you add your coolant. You can see that it's full. Right now, you can see the coolant level right here, the water. If I tap it, you can see it ripple. But that's the uh, top of the coolant. Uh, you can see the area of the square where you can take the top off the machine and clean it. Um, you do have uh, water valves on this. Here's your water pressure gauge. Now that we have the top off, you can see the water pressure gauge here. Um, you have to take, usually take this front cover off here to read your pressure unless you use a mirror. Um, you can also take a rag and wipe this inside out while you have the top off also. So, hey Chris, you grab a rag, and there's one right in the front of my truck, I think. cleaning it all there's a few more checks to do on the machine the way I do it there is um, we have to ch uh, check the voltage the incoming voltage uh, for the compressor and the main power but uh, other than that this machine's working properly I do try to keep them uh, minimum downtime when I turn them off once you get them clean and uh, wiped out then uh, clean machine and uh, we can put the top back on the machine go ahead and grab the top Chris and we'll put the top back on it and get it back running again if you have to use coil cleaner because they're that dirty um, for use a, a mixture of like 50 to 1 uh, with a non acidic uh, solution we're gonna have to get it around the edges first. That's good. Got the machine back on. I'm gonna go ahead and take my voltages. AC 600 volts, the highest setting, and I have my power coming in here, tear to the disconnect, take my incoming power, this is 553, 485, 483, let me take this one again, that one's reading, there we go, 480, okay. So now we want to take the compressor voltage with it running down here. We got 480. I want to check the uh, check sheet and make sure that uh, we've gone through everything. Oh, yeah, we have to fill this whole thing out. So 
so we checked the coil for dirt and damage and cleaned the coil we did that um, we checked the coolant for debris we did that uh, we um, checked the cooling inside the cabinet and so no areas were worn um, we didn't have to fill the reservoir because it was full we checked all the control system and the junction boxes um, we uh, checked for weaker contactors pitted or fixed uh, the way to check your contactors on this machine is while your compressor is running you want to go from the top and the bottom of your contactor so you go from here to here if there is it should be zero volts if it is one volt or more you need to replace the contactor so you check your voltage i have zero there that's good and i have zero there that's good i can also check my pump contactor top to bottom zero top to bottom zero top to bottom zero so all my contactors are in good condition no pitting and they're all the bolts are going through the contactor okay next we have let's see input voltage of each phase which i just did um i verified the pump um and uh, we recorded the flow rate from the MRI controller. That is just the coolant from the back of your machine. You do not have to do that inside. You can just take the temperature of your pipe coming out of your machine here. Um, your discharge pressure of the pump, that comes off your gauge that we showed you inside the machine. And then uh, your running current of each phase, which is like 3.5 amps, we took that. So we also need to get the temperature of our pump so the temperature of our pump motor, we'll take a temperature probe and put it onto our pump and see what the temperature of our pump is. And Chris, you want to do that? Yeah. Yes. And this is, yeah, this is all on the tablet. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, we're going to stick it right on. Just, yeah, we're just going to put it right on the pump and just, I usually just hold it down there and just put the tip onto the uh, pump. Uh, for a couple minutes and read my temperature. And that'll show us the temperature of the pump. You need to change this temperature here. Uh, you have to get down in there, get right on that pump, put it right on there. You can even put your finger on it, uh, right on the pump. too if you have a, a gun to take the temperature yeah. with the gun it works better but this works also it's 400 or 105 degrees which is normal temperature for a motor so all right we got our motor check let's uh, keep going through our list here so that was uh, temperature of the motor from the center uh, we did our compressor discharge pressure our suction pressure our condenser inlet temperature, which is like 95 degrees. Our supply coolant temperature from the PC. Um, that is going to be from uh, the PC uh, in here, which it's reading 17.8. Uh, um, you have your return coolant temperature. You can read all this from the PC. Uh, if you have that PC available, they're not on all machines to read all the temperatures. Um, so we have our compressor discharge temperature, 48 inches from our discharge port, uh, right off the compressor. You want to take that temperature. Um, then you have your compressor suction pipe temperature, four to nine inches from the suction port, which we did, a liquid receiver temperature. Test from the center of the pipe outlet. Um, that's going to be the receiver, the black receiver inside there. So put your temperature probe um, at the center of the outlet where the pipe goes towards the condenser. Um, the compressor running current, which we took, which was 7.5 amps. Uh, and then we checked the refrigerant sight glass. It was full and uh, had a dry color to it. Uh, our expansion valve is working properly. We had a 17 degree superheat. And a visual inspection we did when we did when we started and when we finished and took it apart to check the wiring uh, and anything visual piping. 
So everything is set right. It's set on 60 hertz. Um, our coolant color is yellow, which is normal. We always want a yellow color, and uh, we always uh, we verified our temperatures five minutes for every 30 minutes on the machine. So we've been through the whole check sheet on this PM checklist. Uh, clean the coil. So this PM is uh, complete on this unit. We just got to get it back together, and then we can start our PM on the next machine. What if you find something wrong? Uh, find something wrong. You want to, you know, try to find out what it, what's going on with it. Uh, if, you know, if the machine's not running at all, if you're having problems, uh, we do uh, have a tech support that we can call. Uh, the phone number's available um, through our shop. Um, so it's on the work order. Uh, it's also on the work order. Yep. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we don't find anything wrong with the machines. We have had a couple codes on the machines on arrival um, that were just from dirty coils. They were just from uh, too high a temperature. So cleaning the coil corrected the problem. Where do you find the codes? Uh, the codes will be on the little black screen inside the uh, chiller right here. Uh, it'll usually start with an E. It might be uh, E01, E10, E11. Oh, you'll have a number on this screen. You actually have some buttons here that you can scroll through uh, your codes. You can uh, find the history of the codes. You can reset the codes. Uh, but this screen and uh, tech support can walk you through on how to reset things and how to go through and what the codes mean. So, so this machine's okay. It's back on, back up and running. You can get used to doing them. Yeah, we'll move on. This is the Cairo chiller, and this is the gradient chiller. Um, oh, What's the difference? I don't understand. This, this one's usually the main chiller. This one is the, the main cooling chiller from what I understand from uh, talking to tech support. Uh, the machine will run with this one. Uh, it, this one can go down, and the machine will still be okay with this gradient. Um, I'm not sure if this building's different, but in an, uh, another building I was at, if the gradient machine went down, they had to turn it over to city water bypass or it would not operate. Uh, so the gradient chiller, uh, from what I understand, seems to be more important than the Cairo uh, as far as keeping the temperatures cool on that magnet. Oh, not all the not all the sites have two chillers. So. Yeah, not all the sites have two chillers. Some of them just have one, a, a gradient or a Cairo chiller. Um, uh, if uh, we we have a site that uh, they that uh, the chillers actually doesn't match what they thought they had there, so we're trying to figure out what happened there also. Uh, so you always want to you know make sure the serial number's right if you have any questions uh, about uh, the machine or the if it's the right machine there. Uh, call tech support, give them the serial number. Uh, these machines, they don't have model numbers. They all go by serial number on the machines. So don't worry about trying to find a model number on these machines. You see our water piping here, it's all insulated. You can also check all the insulation for your water piping going into the building around the whole wall here. And then it goes up through this chase metal chase here and then into the magnet room which we do not enter never go in the magnet room <laughs> okay this is our piping for our chillers right here We got filters, they have filters on these. Uh, there's our shutoffs. Um, it looks like this might be the city water bypass here. That may be the bypass, but they're not marked, so we have to find out from them which one's which. Um, these are the supplies, it looks like, and these are the returns. So I don't see a city water bypass unless it's this right here. That's all that I can know, but. We'll have to find out for somebody. This is just temperature at 16 and 17 are good temperatures. You know, if it, it it can go all the way up to 19, it may fluctuate a little bit. 
uh, depending on the load on the on the magnet. But you really you want it to be right about where it is right now on both of these uh, thermostats. Yeah, yeah. That's the only thermostat. You don't have to touch them or anything. You just can look at the temperatures, and that's all you need. And what's this uh, right here? This right here is the helium. This is your helium unit. It's got a compressor. It'll actually it'll handle the, the magnet for one hour if the chillers were to shut off. It's got one hour of time that'll keep them cooling. And this is your bike wall. And you want to see that that's spinning and then it's yellow. Yeah. Then if they don't have a city water bypass, then they have to shut the machine off or else they'll burn it off. For, uh, this is the MRI machine stuff. We don't do nothing with that. Uh, this is your uh, your helium thing. You don't touch it. You don't mess with uh, any of that. Don't press any buttons. Let it go. We don't do anything with this helium. This helium uh, compressor. We don't do anything with it. So it just. What does the helium do? Just it helps the process. It's a backup, helps the process, and it's a backup for an hour if they were to go down. It gives them some time. Do not go in the magnet.